Welcome, welcome to another episode of Two Debate. Uh, you're smiling already. Maybe I should start with something else. It feels like it feels like we're saying the same freaking thing thing all the time. Herzliche willkommen, bienvenue. Oh yeah, bienvenido. <laughs> We can do a German debate today because Sebastian is uh, officially well, well. He he hasn't learned his uh, results yet, but he he tried to get a German um, certificate, so we can we can shock our listeners by having a french german mix debate me speaking very bad french and you speaking very bad german and uh, well thank you no for the bad german you, didn't have to, <laughs> <laughs> I, you didn't have to tell me what you think <laughs> yeah well i you know since you're german and i'm supposed to speak german i think it would be interesting to have one day a debate in german especially since since anyway we prepare these debates so Yeah, that's um, it's very interesting to hear you speaking in another language. So I know, I know, of course. Warum denn? Because it so changes the sound of your voice. It's really, uh, I, th I it's, find it, yeah. I find it profoundly different if people change a language. How different they sound. When my wife switches from German to Fran French, for instance, it's like a different person. If uh, you switch from <laughs> from uh, English to to German, and I haven't heard you that often talking uh, speaking in French though. Um, but it's also it's a complete switch. It's funny people have said that also for, uh, of me when I switch to French between French and English. It's funny. Yeah. So the intonation, the pitch of voice also seems to vary. That's strange. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, in French, you, you're actually a monotone language, right? So you basically you're you're not pronouncing by changing. Mais n'importe quoi. Qu'est-ce que tu me racontes là? Monotone? Ça c'est monotone. <laughs> <laughs> tu m'entends parler là Ça c'est monotone Mais qu'est-ce que Non mais n'importe c'est allemand franchement. <laughs> c'est monotone. La, la langue française c'est une langue monotone. Non mais alors là n'importe quoi. Pour les Français qui nous écoutent, pour It ceux qui parlent français, c'est absolument n'importe quoi. <laughs> This is absolute crap. What you just said. That's what I just said in, in like French, a monotonous language. Like to all the Canadians and Swiss and Belgians and French people who are listening to us, come on. French so, is the most beautiful language on yeah, the planet. Yeah, so in and German, this is this is a cheap attack. So in German, when you try, to, right, when fine. you indicate a question, for instance, you go up, um, you you're asking, "What's your name?" Um, even in English, you're not doing the same thing in French, do you? You 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 hurt me so badly, I cannot respond anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, I have no. I honestly, I have no clue. So, actually. so now our just... listeners expect us to debate something about French and German, and they are at a loss because our motion has nothing to do with either French or German. Nothing, and I have no idea how you're going to make that transition to the to yeah. the, today's motion. And maybe maybe I can make the transition by saying the the capital city of France is Paris, of course. The capital city of uh, Germany is Berlin. And what have both cities in common lately? A flood of e-scooters in the city. And by e-scooter, I mean, of course, these, these scooters where you stand on that without an engine, you would use, uh, you would, um, get forward by pushing yourself. Children in, in most countries used to have these things without an engine. And now they are electrified and uh, a very quick, fast way to, to get around. And so our motion. What made you choose? What made you choose that motion? Which is a very valid one, by the way. It's kind of an obvious, glaring one because it's actually everywhere in the news. Yeah, maybe we should explain the uh, motion. The young being an invasion. We haven't explained the motion yet. Ah. We just talked about the the two cities have in common that there are scooters. Um, yeah. So um, from there, that's the segue towards our motion, which is publicly available e-scooters are a terrible idea and should be banned. So correct. That's the motion. And the flip of the coin made it so that you go first and you are for banning these, uh, these scooters. Ooh. Ooh. Against people's freedom, yes. am I not? Uh, that, uh, the usual, don't, right? don't, don't tell me my arguments. Um, <laughs> so what, what made me choose that, uh, that motion? Well, um, you see them everywhere, it feels like, at least if you're in, in major cities. Um, apparently not everywhere because in the countryside they are less common, but if you are in big cities... Uh, You can't help but notice that there are like several flavors of them. There are, at least in Frankfurt alone, there are five companies competing over over the market for e-scooter renting, and they they are, as I said, very common everywhere. They they drive around in all these cities, so it's it's a topic that's debated over, 
And some people are annoyed. Some people love them. They are fun to drive around with. I I play. Uh, Have you tried? Yes, I tried. I use them every once in a while. When I uh, normally I would walk a lot of distances, but every once in a while when I'm in a rush, it's very tempting. Also, it's fun to drive them. So I I tried them. I've never tried. Yeah, you should. But uh, well, no, yeah. You, since you since you're for banning, <laughs> let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. I am sure you have seen them everywhere on the streets of most cities by now. They are everywhere. They're in front of my house. They're in my way in, on my way out of the subway station. They're like weed. They spread everywhere. It's just annoying. It's an invasion. And I can bet you, I can bet you, dear listener, that you have already been bothered at least once at least once by some guy on a scooter who was scooting on the pavement or not respecting the traffic light or almost hit you. Whether you're a user or not, that's not what I'm saying here. I can bet you you have been bothered. And let's say it, these machines are dangerous. Whether you don't use them or you do, I'm sure you will also agree with that. Most people, unfortunately, are not wearing helmets. How many do I see are riding one scooter with two people crossing zebra crossing just yesterday, literally? This, the, the zebra crossing, despite the light being red for pedestrians, those machines are not safe for their users. They're not safe for people around. And we can already start calculating the number of people who are getting killed by using these e-scooters. They can go up to 30 kilometers per hour, which, by the way, 30 kilometers per hour is enough to die in a car if you're not wearing a seatbelt. In a car, right, which has a metal frame around you, if you're not wearing a seatbelt, you die. Imagine on a scooter, which has no seatbelt, and most people are not wearing helmets. They change direction really quickly on cobblestone streets because the wheels are tiny. It's pure physics. It's pure physics. The wheels are just too small. People ride them when they're drunk. I was reading articles. Yeah, just, it's just insane. Right? It, and it forces mayors of some towns around the world to actually ban them already. I did not know that was already the case. They banned these e-scooters being made available publicly. Funnily enough, if you were owning your own scooter, you'd probably be more careful wearing a helmet, protection gear, and certainly not using this with two people right, to damage the material that you took the time to buy. I think the e-scooters made publicly available are the wrong solution to a real, real problem, which is traffic issues in cities, pollution problems. They're a wrong solution because the real thinking should be how to make city centers more pedestrian and cycle-friendly. E-scooters require batteries, they, they're made of metal, and they're not actually as friendly for the environment as they may first look like. They're thrown in rivers and canals. It seems like a national sport, actually, in some countries like the UK or France, to just throw away these publicly available scooters and uh, electric bikes. Um, I will carry on with more arguments, but in short, I think I have plenty of arguments here to show you why they're just a terrible idea. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Me, 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 me. So people are not wearing helmets. People are getting in your way. People are driving too fast. All the arguments that you just made could have been made and were made when bicycles were introduced to traffic, when cars were introduced to traffic. Do you know that there was a law in the UK when cars were introduced into traffic that every car that was driving on the street had to be led by someone walking in front of it with a warning sign? So... In order to be safe, considered safe in traffic for people to participate in traffic, somebody had to walk in front of a car with the sign. So people were concerned about the safety of their fellow citizens. And I applaud you for being that concerned for the safety of everyone. But I tell you something. Uh, whether you drive with a e-scooter or with a bike, the speed is not that much of a difference. If you care to look outside the building, you will see a lot of people driving with bikes without helmets. And bikes go faster than e-scooters because, at least in Germany, they are not allowed to go faster than 20 kilometers per hour, not 30, as you sa said. And uh, bikes are allowed to go as fast as they go so if you if you drive downhill with a bike they can go as fast as they want uh, also throwing stuff in in rivers yeah that is a common problem that's even a, a problem for your pers uh, privately owned bikes um, it's something that happens especially in cities like paris or berlin or that like major cities where you have people thinking it's funny to to throw stuff they find in public into the rivers uh, is that bad? Yes. Is this an e-scooter problem? 
No. On the other hand, e-scooters solve a traffic problem. Everybody who, who uses an e-scooter to, to get around in a city is not using a car for that matter and is not cloaking the traffic, but instead using a more efficient way to get around. They are more energy efficient. They are sometimes slower than their alternatives would be. And I, I'm sure as soon as people know how to operate them well, they are not that dangerous either. So no, they shouldn't be banned and they are not a terrible idea. Actually, they're a pretty good solution to a problem we have. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let me clarify my thinking here. I think we're looking at two things, which I think are incompatible. Electric and being publicly available. I think you can have one or the other, but not both together. Let me explain. I think it's perfectly fine to use your privately owned electric scooter because you're not going to leave it in the street. You're probably going to train with it and you're going to use it regularly. You're going to know your machine. Or you can have public scooters, which are not electric or public bikes, because they cannot go as fast and they're not as dangerous. But if you have both, the combination of both, there's just a disregard for that property or you don't know that machine very well, which can go pretty fast and kill you or kill others, by the way. So I think the combination of a fast device, which on the surface looks great, and making it publicly available is actually a disaster combination. So that's, the, the I think, the crux of the issue here. And I'll jump directly to the last point you, you raised around the traffic issue. And I started talking about this, how I think it's a false solution to a real problem. Look at what's happening here. You have all these e-scooters which have proliferated in the cities. What was the reaction? It was not to create lanes for scooters, just like lanes were created for bikes. It was to regulate them from the pavement, right? And have parking um, spots for these e-scooters. It was not about removing cars from the city centers or making things less polluted. It's like, oh, there's just too many of them. We're going to regulate the whole thing. So instead of trying to think holistically about the transportation problem, you just try to regulate you know, where the, the, the space on the, on the pavement. So I think that's a, the that's a wrong uh, solution to a real problem and doesn't solve anything actually in the end. Um, and, and by the way, you cannot transport a family on a scooter, right? It's so very much of an individual mode of transportation, right? So that works for the, you know, the teenager or the, the single guy or woman who wants to go to work. But how do you do if you're a mother with kids? Uh, there's nothing you can do. It's not a solution for them. You mentioned the, the rivers, actually. The, the, you see a lot of privately owned bikes in rivers. Yeah, that has always been true. But, and I'm pretty certain of that fact for having read it uh, in, the, in the past few weeks, they've seen the, th the, the town, the city authorities in many cities have seen a spike Ever since these e-bikes and these e-scooters have been made available, it's like it's had multiplied by 10, the number of vehicles, the, such vehicles and, and, and that you see in the rivers. There's always been uh, stuff thrown in the rivers, but now it's like exponential because of the availability of these things which are not locked, right? You can just pick them up and throw them, right? When you have your own bike or your scooter, you would lock it to a tree, to some mechanism by definition, right? It's private property. So it's much more difficult to actually grab it. And finally, it's also, a no, I think, nonsensical from a financial perspective. I think it's a trap that people are not um, being very uh, way, uh, mindful of. And that's actually owning your own scooter is probably much more interesting financially than paying and renting for one, which is ready, readily or not readily available in the street. You're going to some location, let's say for a job interview or whatever, you get out of it, there's no scooter, someone else took it, right? And you can't find nothing else around. So you're stuck. So I think it makes no sense financially. And I think we'll realize this over time. The companies will realize they cannot make a profit because there's too many, too often damaged, stolen. And the people are going to realize it's actually not worth it for them. And they will go cheaper and cheaper, just like everything becomes cheaper because batteries become cheaper. And in any case, I would recommend use your legs, right? Do sports, right? I have a manual skateboard. It's perfectly fine in cities from Paris to Jakarta to Dublin next week. Please bring your skateboard. I only have practice. longboards. I cannot bring my longboard as cabin language. Ah, longboards. You know what I mean? I've got a cruiser board. That's a generic term. Yeah, and they are Don't apparently weapons. I cannot bring them as cabin language. Like it depends on the airline. I tried. Okay. I tried. At airline and airport. So Paris, Amsterdam, San Francisco. I could take it in cabin luggage, even though it's bigger than a cabin thing. Uh, Jakarta, Singapore doesn't work. I think I got turned down by Lufthansa in Munich. I'm not sure about Frankfurt. I'm not sure I'm taking the risk. But anyway, I will see. 
All right, we are digressing again. So, <laughs> my argument now. Now, it's Dirk's turn. So the last one is actually easiest to debunk. The, oh, there are no scooters around, and this is why it falls apart, is pretty much of a straw man. First off, the whole business depends on having a lot of scooters, that's right. But the problem is not that there are too, uh, not enough scooters. If anything, then we debate that there are too many of them. And if there is no scooter around, yeah, then it's the same situation you would have faced in the past. Then there is public transport, there is taxi services, so or you walk. Yes, that has always been the case. That continues to be the case, even in times where you can have an e-scooter. What are the advantages of e-scooters? So first off, you can argue that at least to some degree, having e-scooters around maybe uh, saves uh, the occasional car driver from driving into the city by themselves, because they kind of reach the last final distance using an e-scooter. That's good for the environment, that's good for traffic, that's good for everyone. Secondly, having a massive fleet of e-scooters around also allows the companies that drive these e-scooters and everybody they partner with to understand traffic flow in the city that's an argument that's not to be disregarded all these things are basically th those are driving cell phones if you will uh, the companies know at any point where they are being picked up where they are drove driven to and uh, it tells already modern cities a lot about traffic in their cities and, from, and give them information they haven't had before that will help optimizing for future traffic scenarios Thirdly, having a massive fleet of electrified devices driving around will help speeding up market research, will help um, development of batteries, will turn those devices into better devices. And yes, no one, ta no one uh, sets in stone that these devices have to stand around freely. Maybe, if any regulation at all is necessary, then let's put a regulation in place that these things have to be parked somewhere where they are being locked. In some cities, this even is the case. I've seen that for instance when i was in russia in st petersburg they had stations where these these scooters were were had to be locked in and you would unlock and take it from them and lock it back in when you're done driving and you have that basically means you have to bring those scooters to the places where they are um where, where the, such lock places are available that would be a solution to the problem that they are standing around and being thrown in rivers so all of these things that we mentioned have a nice and easy solution on the upside, uh, having more electrified transportations uh, instead of having gas-based transportation is good for the environment. Having more data about cities is good for city planning. Having less big and more small means of transportation is good for the environment as well. Uh, and you know what? The family, the mother with their kids, they wouldn't have uh, walked. They, they would have taken the car in the past and they would probably continue to take the car even uh, sim simply because it's what they need when they want to travel with the whole family. So e-scooters are not for them anyway. And that's not an argument either. So no, they are not to be banned. And yes, they are a good idea. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. In conclusion, I'll just say three things. One, they're way too dangerous. If you care about your life, or if you care the life about others, do not use them. If you still, still, still want to use one, own one. I just checked right now. What is the cost of a, an e-scooter delivered from China? It's $150. I, I was stunned at the price. I believe you, you rent it roughly at around one euro, one dollar a minute. You can do the math, right? It's about what? Two hours of usage will, will make you have, it's the price of one. So I don't think there's a financial business model which is viable here, as opposed to having your own device. Third thing, I really insist it's a full solution to a real problem of pollution and traffic in cities. I think it will become an excuse for cities to not invest in, for instance, tramways, electric tramways, or to reduce the number of cars, diesel cars, in city centers. Um, I worry about this, right? On the funny excuse, I say, oh, you have this solution. We deal with it. We don't need to do, any, to do anything else. People, people figure it out. In conclusion, I think it's a terrible idea. And, in, and I think they will disappear anyway. When I say they, the public, publicly available ones, not the privately owned ones where you use your own thing to go from point A to point B. I think that's 
applicable and it will still exist, but the publicly available ones, I don't think they will uh, exist in the future. Anyway, don't need even don't even need to ban them. Bye. Dirk. For my final minute, I burst the final bubble of your argument, which is, oh, they are so dangerous. So in Germany, they are legal since June and all major cities have them and all major cities looked closely at the statistics, how many accidents, how many deaths even. And uh, yeah, so far it looks like accidents with bikes are 40 times as likely as accidents with e-scooters. So for our every e-scooter accident that uh, makes it into the statistics, there are 40 bike accidents, at least in German cities. And I doubt that other cities are more dangerous than this, except maybe for Paris. I don't know how crazy people drive. Oh, I do know how crazy people drive in Paris, actually. But anyway, um, my, my point is, it's not as dangerous as you make it sound. It is a solution to a transportation problem. It's one of many solutions we have to uh, we have need to to see more of. And overall, it's more eco-friendly than the alternatives. And therefore, publicly available e-scooters are a good idea and are a good step in the right direction. Here we are. So what was your initial thoughts? Before you submitted the motion or as you submitted the motion? I had no, I had no fixed opinion, actually. Uh, as I said, it's fun riding them, although it's a bit annoying that they are speed limited. In Germany, they are 20 kilometers an hour. That's not fast. Every bike is faster than you. Uh, every skateboard, for that matter. If you're on a skateboard downhill, you're definitely faster than these e-scooters. Uh, unless you're, you're, you're a sissy like me and I'm, get, I'm actually getting off the board. When me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, <laughs> There's no way I'm doing down the hill. But I, I've been, you know, um, I've, been, I've been passed by people on skateboards and bikes and I'm, I'm feeling kind of slow when I'm on one of these things. Maybe I'm too heavy, I don't know. That's one thing. They are annoying because people people use uh, drive with them through pedestrian areas. They drive with them through parks and they, they are parking them on the walkway and things like that. But there's a solution to that problem. And here in Frankfurt, where I live, the police started actually handing out tickets they stop people when they are driving on the walkway and they give them a ticket uh, and I, I already see this having an effect so they have to basically be treated like bikes so you have to use the bike lane and you have there are areas where you're not allowed to drive into and slowly but surely it gets better but they are sometimes annoying that's one side of the the coin and as you said uh, they are not as eco-friendly as they are marketed so you couldn't say if you if people who would walk now use an e-scooter it's even even the opposite effect and i i'm victim to that myself i walk a lot and every once in a while now i take an e-scooter and in the past i would have just continued walking so this this is an argument against that on the other hand things will get more efficient soon the more we have them the more market pressure is there to make them make them valuable and make them low price and make the batteries living longer and make it more efficient so it becomes part of the mix and i think this is what works for them so after after a while you will have e-scooters for the right scenarios and uh, the scenarios they actually help reducing traffic in some areas yeah that's that's what i thought i uh i think overall i don't really care uh, it's a bit like Facebook. It can exist, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, I just don't feel I'm, I'm in the target. I don't know. I, I'm probably I'm part of the target audience, but I take my my skateboard. Right? I want to use my legs. I want to walk, right? and that's why I'm resisting buying an electric skateboard because it sounds fancy. It looks cool. It's like yeah, I could cover more distance, but then I would never use my manual scan skateboard with my legs because I'll be I'll be tempted to use this electric stuff. Right? And honestly, in most places I go around the planet, everywhere actually, from Jakarta to Paris to San Francisco to Mountain View, I have never felt the need for this e-scooter. And I carry my luggage on my skateboard, or I walk around, or I take public transportation. I'm not like the, I've never, I used to never take the taxi for, I've never taken the taxi for a personal reason, for instance. Right? And, I, and I do travel for personal purposes, and I always find a way out. So I don't know. I, I really think that there's a... I, I didn't think of it that way so much as much as when I was talking about it just 10 minutes ago, but the financial aspect. When, when the thing is going to cost $50 or less than 100 are people going to spend a euro 
a minute or 50 cents a minute when they when just for you know the, the cost of half an hour you can own yours I don't think it's viable for these for these businesses businesses I, I don't think they're necessarily a bad idea but from a business model standpoint the publicly available e-scooters I don't think they're they, it's gonna I work I think it's out. the same stuff with uh, like the Ubers of this planet and uh, all the other models they, they probably rush to be uh, market dominating and then then they they can make money in the margin but until they do they actually l lose money that's 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 look right. at the bikes there's a lot of chinese companies uh which uh, pulled out of some uh, british and french cities because they were just vandalized too much which shows as you said it's a very thin margin business yeah and uh yeah i just i but for bikes it's a bit different because bikes well maybe not that much actually I think the price of everything is just so low that I, I, I actually don't think in the 10 years time or 20 years time the cities will be inundated with these devices. I, it's, it, it could be, but I, I have a doubt. I don't know, I think it's a trend. I think it's fashion, a bit like skateboards. Skateboards are coming back in fashion now, but they were not 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I see longboards and skateboards everywhere in the cities now. Not, not electric ones, but the, the manual ones, just like me. I started, I started using one because I see them more around me and in the shop. And they were not in the shop where I usually buy my stuff, my sports gear. All right, so I think they're a trend. That's why I, I don't think they're here to stay. Yeah, I, I started I skateboarding. I think about it right now. I started skateboarding about 12 years ago. So, um, and back then, my boards that I have, um, you could buy boards uh, everywhere, but I actually imported them. So I started my first board was actually, I bought it in, in Seattle because it was like every corner had a skateboard shop. Yep. And uh, and they were beautiful and it was kind of rare here. And now nowadays you're right. They are everywhere and there are more of them. But but maybe it's here to stay, you know, maybe there's this revival thing because people realize oh they need to do sports and it's fun and and it's cheaper and you got good equipment and what have you. I don't know, right? I, I just sometimes think there are like these the a bit like a uh, hoverboard a couple of years ago or three years ago, or well, maybe more now, five years ago. I don't see them anymore. Mm. Hoverboards. You know these things for kids? Well, it's many kids actually doing it. Or, or the ones with the mono wheel, electric yeah, I mono see wheel. I, see I used to see them occasionally. I used to th see them much, much more. Like suddenly, like it, everyone had one, and then nobody. I don't see them anymore at all. Mm -hmm. Zero. So I want I, I wonder here if there's a similar trend whereby okay, yeah, people are finding fun. In fact, I see a lot of people just having fun with the e-scooters. I don't see I don't know. I don't know. I don't have statistics in mind, but I see people just having fun on it. Mm. They go to parks. Like this is the ir irony. They go in parks where people walk to have like this Sunday walk, you know. And you see like these people on these electric scooters. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so it's it's like, oh, I want to have fun. Like I want to feel the breeze on my on my on my head, right? But it, like loses its sense. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in favor of banning necessarily. But. Me neither. Just for the sake of being a bit more controversial. So. What is your stance, dear listener? Are publicly available e-scooters the worst and ideally should be banned or are at least not something that you find useful? Then follow Sebastian's argument. That means to click the thumbs up button because Sebastian is in favor of the motion. That was, they are the worst or stupid or whatnot and need to be banned. Or did I have the better arguments that they are a solution to a problem that we need to solve that they are a better solution than some of the alternatives that they are not that bad after all then thumbs down is the button that I hope you click and uh, you do so on to debate.eu and hear you next week or the week after that we don't know all right thank you for listening thank you and stay tuned for the next episode bye, bye. Terrible idea, right? Because French is a monotonous language, so you just don't drop at the end of the sentence. So, oh. right. That's what I learned when I tried to learn French. Now, don't bitch around Probably here. Probably true. Probably true. French is a mono monotonous. Mono yeah, you're not. You're not per transporting meaning through the, the 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 tonality of your language. Other languages do. You'll see. You'll see when I speak French if I don't transport. <laughs> 
Oh wow, yeah. It reminds me of how I shouted at a hot bit of hot hotel reception. The, next, the, next, he thing, gave me the next thing you tell me is that French speakers are not arrogant. And then oh, no, that's, <laughs> no, no, that's not speakers. <laughs> French people. French people are definitely arrogant. No, I Parisian people I, I are think, definitely I think arrogant. It's, it has something to do with the language. Did I, did I ever tell you that story when I tried, before I start my, my argument now, but uh, when I tried to pick up some French, because my wife is actually fluent in French. Uh, in French so, you told me. Yeah, and I tried to learn it, and then I was saying something in French on the breakfast table. My kids with their school French perfectly understood me. And my, my wife was like, what are you saying? No, no, I don't get what what again? And then oh, you mean and then put in over pronounced French phrase here. That was like, see, this is why people think French are arrogant because even if I make a best effort, even you as a non-native speaker bitch me around. <laughs> I I haven't bitched you around no. first of all, but give it a yeah. shot. Anyway, I, it is true that I'm lucky to be that it's th this way ar around. It's easier for a French person to learn German than the other way around. I think we, unfortunately, the French language has too many exceptions, which for a German mindset would be like, would drive you nuts. Like it, I, I don't understand how a foreigner can actually learn French. I don't know. But uh, I like don't understand native, how you can learn German. So we are in it together for this. No, no, it's very structured language. No, 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 it's a very structured language. The French as well. I, I felt like uh, when I, when I tried to pick up the basics, I should make another effort to actually learn it. Speak. I'll give you an example. Although we don't have three genders, um, for nouns, they have no logic whatsoever. Zero logic. Zero. <laughs> right? In German, if it ends with height, kite, feminine. If it comes from a verb, das atmen, it will be neutral. But there are some rules. We can probably guess what is going, what is going to be the, the gender. There is zero thing. It's la moustache feminine. The moustache, like, uh, not, you know, like, le sac à main, the handbag, the woman's handbag. It's masculine. It makes there's no sense whatsoever. There's no way you can know unless you actually know the vocabulary exactly. It's already hard enough for me in German, right? But I can always fall back on these little tricks, you know? like you transform a word or you, you tie it together. Right? If you're talking about phi height, you add some I don't know, like verkehrs phi height, whatever, like whatever. You invent a word because you know phi height is feminine, so you can then decline things properly. That's an example of structure. Right? With, with, with rules which allow you to guess and be able to have a, a good structure of your sentence. <laughs> In French, none of that. <laughs> yeah. E-scooters. Uh, maybe, maybe I should... I should. Nächstes Mal wir diskutieren wir über Sprachen. Und welche, Spra welche Sprache ist... Uh, Die bessere. Monoton. Monoton. Einfach. <laughs>